The cross was not the fact that Jesus suffered. For not many years after that, individuals in the name of Jesus Christ were beaten, were sewn up in skins of animals and thrown to lions to be devoured, eaten alive, were flayed alive, skinned alive. Peter was crucified in the way of Christ, but he requested they crucify him upside down. The Apostle Paul had his head chopped off. Christians were boiled in oil. John was exiled to the Isle of Patmos because he was boiled. I want to just tell you something. If suffering is all there was to it, anybody could have done it. And Jesus didn't suffer for our salvation, my friend. He became sin. He became sin. And the cross, when we look at the cross, and in a couple, uh, next week we're going to be in the book of Hebrews, and we're going to look about crucifying Christ afresh, and putting Him to an open shame, and putting Him back up on the cross, and see what's represented there. But I want to tell you something, the cross is not about suffering, the cross is about sin. The fact that a holy, spotless Lamb of God who never sinned, who never wronged anybody, became your sin. The things that condemned you to hell by God Almighty. The things that you should have suffered for for an eternity. Jesus became your sin. Some of us think pretty highly of ourselves and we don't think our sin's all that bad. I'm just telling you, Jesus had God the Father turn His back on Him when He became your sin. The things that you've done when God saw it, He hated His Son in your place. And that was the cross. The cross was what Jesus was called to when He was called to take our place. And so for me, my friend, and according to the Scripture, the cross means a substitution. The cross means a substitution. It doesn't mean uh, somebody being put up in suffering like any man could suffer. Hey, listen, you could suffer, couldn't you? I know some folks that have suffered. I know folks that are suffering right now. Anybody can suffer. But not anybody can die for the sins of the world. It had to be a spotless Lamb of God. See, the cross is more than suffering. It's more than a hard time, my friend, is the fact that God became my sin. The sins that I've committed, Jesus died for. But see, it's not about the dying, my friend. It's about the fact that somehow God the Father turned His back on God the Son and saw His Son representing us For three days, God the Son was looked at the way we should have been looked at. And so the cross means a lot of different things to different people. By the way, here's what it means to the Jews and to the Greeks. The Bible says in verse 18 that Paul said, My purpose wasn't to preach, to, it wasn't to baptize. He said, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. He says, Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. I would submit to you this morning that the cross of Christ has been made of none effect in the church. I would submit to you this morning that the cross of Christ has been made without effect in the church. And the church is supposed to represent Jesus. And I would submit to you this morning that the cross that represents the cross of Jesus has been made without effect. And Paul said when you become focused on baptism, when you become focused on who you're following, uh, is baptism good? Did the Apostle Paul stop baptizing? He said, I won't ever baptize again. All right, from here on, baptism has become a distraction. We're going to abolish that ordinance. No, sir. What Paul said is you've forgotten what it's all about. Christian, any good thing can become a bad thing when you've forgotten what the right thing is. And it's about the cross of Jesus Christ and the life of a Christian. is about Jesus Christ. And I would submit to you this morning that if the Apostle Paul was not sent to baptize, and if the Apostle Paul was not sent to pen Scripture, and if the Apostle Paul was not sent... To, uh, to establish churches. And if the Apostle Paul, by the way, did he do those things? Did he do so with God's authority? Did he do so because God sent him? Yes, and so it wasn't, these things ought to be abolished and this thing ought to be the only thing. Christian, what he's saying is, this is not what you're all about. These are the things we do, but they're not what, we, what, what represents Christ, what represents the cross. And I want to tell you something, Christian. I don't know what you do. I don't know what your job is at Fort Lauderdale Baptist Church. You ought to have a job here. You ought to have a place here. You ought to have a part here. We ought to be able to depend on you. You ought to, have, uh, you ought to see yourself as more than just somebody that comes and partakes. You ought to see yourself as a servant of Jesus Christ in this local church. But Christian, it ain't about your job in the local church. It's not about the particular thing you do. It's about the cross of Jesus Christ and preaching it. And I don't care where you work at, where you live at. 
It's not about where you work. It's not about where you live. It's about preaching the cross of Jesus Christ. And that's what the Apostle Paul was saying. And I would submit to you that if it were true for him, it would be true for us as well. I want to ask you, how important is the preaching of the cross of Jesus? Hey, hey, when was the last time that, that you saw that your primary purpose, your only role in life, the only reason you're here is to preach Jesus Christ? When was the last time you went through some suffering and you said, boy, it's a hard time, but I just got to remember that suffering is not why I'm here. It's not what I've got to focus on. The only reason I'm here is to preach Jesus. When's the last time uh, something went well in your life and you thought, well, this is nice, this is enjoyable, and I thank God that life is good and that I can have joy as a Christian. I can have confidence and assurance and hope and a home in heaven, but I've got to remember that my primarily pur primary purpose is to preach the cross of Jesus Christ. Christian, I want to tell you what the cross represents for us. It represents the gospel. Paul uses these words interchangeably. And what's the gospel? Well, and, and uh, I'm glad you asked that. Let's go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 15. We'll read it real quickly. Pastor's never going to be done. Yes, I will. Uh, our 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I meant to say. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you, this is the same book, so it'd probably be pretty good to define what he means in the same letter that he wrote without stop, right, from end to end. And so this is the end of the letter. He begins it by saying, I preach the gospel, I preach the cross of Christ. And at the end of it, he says, this is the gospel. And so you say, well, okay, we'll preach the gospel. What is it? I declare unto you, verse 1 of chapter 15, the gospel which I preach unto you, which ye have also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. And so we know the gospel is the, the, uh, the good news that, that uh, by it means of it we're able to be saved. And so it has something to do with salvation. So what you preach has to do with being saved, right? If we're going to preach the gospel, that's going to be our purpose in life. Well, verse 3 says, I deliver unto you first of all that which also I received, how that, here's what the gospel is, Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. Where did Jesus die? On the cross. This is the cross of Jesus. You want to preach the cross, which is the gospel. You preach the gospel, you preach the cross, and they're the same thing. Then you're going to preach that Jesus died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And then He was buried. Okay, so if you preach the cross, you're going to preach more than a, a thing that's shaped like this and this. You're going to preach that Jesus died, and then you're going to preach that He was buried. Why is it important for a Christian to understand that He was buried? Why was it important for the church at Corinth? I'll tell you why, because they had sin in that church, and they needed to get their sin buried with Jesus because sin died with Jesus. And Jesus died and he was buried, and the Bible says it rose again according to the Scriptures. When they preached the resurrection. And I'll tell you why you're in church on Sunday morning. You're here to hear the preaching of the cross. And you're here to hear, the, hear it on the day that Jesus was resurrected from the dead. This is Resurrection Sunday, friend. And so we make a big deal on it once a year around the approximate calendar time, probably exact calendar time for all I know, uh, but approximately the calendar day that Jesus was resurrected and we make a holiday out of it. And I'm telling you, Christians meet every Sunday because of the preaching of the cross. See, the fact that Jesus died is important to Ryan Price because you know why? Because I should have died. But Jesus died in my place. And so that's very relevant for me. The preaching of the cross is very relevant. Hey, stop arguing with people and tell them that Jesus died because of them. And say, you know what, let's not argue about whether or not you deserve to die. Let me just tell you, Jesus did it for you. Jesus died for your sins, according to the Scriptures. Whose sins did Jesus die for? The Bible says not for ours only. That's a collective group of individuals that have received Jesus. But for the sins of the whole world, that's the group of people that haven't received Jesus. Jesus died for them. He was buried, the Bible says, and rose again. Friend? Hey, Christian? How about it? Are you buried with Jesus? Can you identify with the burial aspect of the cross? Does it make any sense to you? Hey, is, is life different for you because Jesus saved you? Is, are things different? Hey, pastor, are you preaching this morning that if I don't change, I'm not saved? Friend, I'm just preaching this morning that the Bible teaches that if you're buried with Jesus, you don't have to live any sin any longer. You can have victory over sin. I'm not trying to make anyone question their salvation this morning. Uh, don't misunderstand me. Then. What saves you is not your works. You didn't get saved by your works. You can't live by your works after you're saved. You're saved by grace and you're kept by grace. Friend, but I want to help you understand this morning that God can give you victory over sin through the cross of Jesus Christ. And the next time you meet somebody who's got a real problem and they say, uh, you know, can you help me? Tell them I can help you. I told a lady that the other day. She looked bad. But she, I was going into Walmart and a lady.